Hello, my name is Jorgelina with Pixel Art Mysteries and Education, and today we are going to talk about how to edit your new maze template. Um, so a little bit, um, just to get started before we get started with the editing, um, if you have purchased the activity that has drop down menus and you're interested in editing that one, please make sure to watch that video. This one does not have any drop downs. Um, although the videos are very, very similar, the other one does show you how to edit the drop downs. This one will not. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and jump right into editing. I am going to be editing mine for math. However, the answers are going to be words. So you'll get to see how you can definitely update these um, to match whatever content you need. We're gonna talk about some tips and tricks. Um, there And there are definitely things in here that you're not going to need. Um, so you can fast forward those bits and pieces um, if they don't pertain to you, but I wanna give you as many tips as I possibly can. So first off, you can see that I did update the title on this one. So this is what your template would look like, but instead it would say add your um, title here. So I am going to be working with parent functions. Um, and the reason why I chose this topic for the video is because as questions, we are going to be using pictures and formulas. So I wanna talk about um, the different things that you can do in order to type in um, special characters or import pictures um, if you're not necessarily typing in questions. Okay, so the first, the way that these maces work, um, when your students get their actual activity, there would be no answers on here. So I'm just deleting all of it. You see all of that pathway um, going away. And this would be the start piece. So if you need to know what the trajectory is, because if you look at the instructions here, um, the instructions do say that they can do the extra ones for extra practice. Um, you might want to edit that, right? You might not want to offer extra practice. You might want your students not to answer those questions. Um, that is 100% up to you. The trajectory of the maze could be found on sheet two. So I'm gonna go ahead and select sheet two so we can just explore it a little bit. Um, I scrolled all the way off um, to the right and I'm gonna go down and over here on row 116, you see where all of the um, magic is going to happen. So these are the question numbers. The questions are set up on your maze to be read from left to right, just like we would read a book. Um, so question number one is the first one in the top left corner, and then you go two, three, four as you go off to the right, and then it goes down to the bottom. So these are where we're gonna put our answers in. It just makes it easier to find those answers if they're in order, but the trajectory that the maze takes is right here on the X column. So from one, the answer whatever is in number one, this one is gonna lead them to whatever the answer is in number seven. That way, if you want to set these up to maybe get tougher as they're answering questions, then you know this is the way they are going to be answering questions if they're following along the maze, okay? And then these three are the ones that are not in the on the trajectory. I just called them extra credit. That's what I would do in my own class. I would offer them as extra credit to early finishers. Um, or um, just anything like that, but those three questions are not part of the trajectory. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is adding the questions themselves. Then we'll talk about um, editing the answer sheet so that your worksheet works out. Um, for this particular activity, I am going to need a little bit of extra directions. Um, so as you can see here, it says start on the maze board on the question where it says start type your answer in the yellow field. Well, students are gonna need to know what they are answering in this case. So what they're going to be answering is the name of a family of functions. So I would say something like decide which function, family, your equation or graph belongs to and type it in the yellow field. Okay, if your answer is correct, it will turn pink and show you a path to your next question. You're done when you reach the end question. All questions left unanswered can be completed for extra practice. So you can be as detailed or not as you want in these directions, they are completely customizable. Um, and then what I would wanna give students um, is those function family names. 
Um, this would also be a great activity to do with the drop down if you have that template, right? Something like that. But in this case, this is not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm selecting this column and I'm gonna I'm gonna insert another column right below it. So I'm right clicking and I'm gonna go insert one row, not column right below so that I can add additional instructions. I'm gonna highlight the whole thing and then go over here where it says merge cells and merge those cells together so I can add a few extra instructions. What I wanna add in this one is I wanna add those function family names. So include it, um, maybe the family, uh, the function families included in this activity are, I don't like all these capital letters, function families included in this activity are, and then I would just type in those here, um, linear, cubic, quadratic, and so on. Okay, so I did just want to show you, you can definitely do things like that. Um, if you need additional space, you can add extra columns. All right. So now I'm going to start adding the questions in. For the first one, because I teach math, I do want to add an equation in here. It's really hard to type in equations. There are extent extensions like Equatio that you can use. I personally don't like those. They just leave kind of like a weird um, box around it. So instead, I like using PowerPoint. So I'm going to add an equation here. I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, if you don't need to add an equation, let's say you're typing in just a question, that's what I would do. Um, maybe let's say here on number three, I can have something like um, the function. I'm just typing in a question. The function has degree of one half. Okay, so that's obviously too long for this box. So I do want the text to wrap. So I'm selecting this box here and I'm gonna go over here to where it says text wrapping. I'm gonna click on that and the arrow that tells me to wrap the text. Okay, so now I have the function has a degree of one half and I know that the answer to that is a radical. That's the it's a radical function. So I'm just going to type that in there. Notice how nothing changed. That's because the answer is incorrect. Um, but this is what you would do. If you're just typing in questions, um, you can definitely just go through that, type in your questions, type in your answers, and then come back, um, maybe fast forward the video and come back when you see a screen that looks like this. Okay, so this is what I'm aiming for. If you want to continue to watch how to add the additional pieces, definitely follow along with me for that. So on the first one, I'm going to add an equation. Um, so to do that, like I said, I'm going to use PowerPoint. So I'm gonna open up my PowerPoint. And I have an equation already here, um, but I wanna show you how to do this from scratch. So I'm gonna go to insert and equation so i clicked on the insert tab i know you can't see it on the recording but i'm just opening up an equation on powerpoint and i'm going to type in uh, p of x is equal to um, x squared okay so i have this equation that's what i would add as my first question i'm going to highlight the whole thing and i'm going to make make the font, font size really really large so maybe like an 80. The reason why I do this is because when I'm going to say this as a picture and when I say this as a picture, um, Sheets is going to recognize it as a much crisper image if it has to reduce it down in size rather than if it has to enlarge it. If it has to enlarge it, it's going to get pixelated and I definitely don't want that. Okay, so I'm going to select this. I'm going to right click and then I'm going to go to save as picture. I'm going to save this somewhere where I can easily find it. Um, I would call it number one as it is my question number one and hit save. Okay, so I already have one in there because I've already gone through this process. So I'm going to hit cancel because I already have one in there. Okay, but the reason why I like using PowerPoint is because not only is it creating the picture for me, it's creating a transparent PNG, a transparent picture, which means that whatever beautiful background I have, whatever color I've chosen for my maze, it's going to save that and all I'm going to see is the text. Okay, so again, I can't, um, I, I just can't rave about this enough. 
I think PowerPoint is the way to go. Yes, it does take a little bit longer, but your equations are gonna look exactly like what your students see on their textbooks, on any website they visit, um, on Go Formative if you do things like that. Um, so that there's no like funny looking equations that you have to like Mickey Mouse um, to get them to look right. All right, so that's my first tip is adding equations. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up again, and then I'm gonna put that equation into this um, question number one. So I'm selected. I'm selecting here the start button. As you can see, it's highlighted. I'm gonna go to insert, image, image and cell, and then I'm going to go and find that question number one that I just made. Okay, so I'm just selecting it, gonna bring it right in, and now I have that question in there. The answer to this one is quadratic, so I'm just gonna answer that there. So that's my first tip, adding an equation. Um, the second tip that I have here, I wanna add a graph. Um, my favorite way to download graphs or to make graphs is either using GeoGebra or using um, Desmos. So I'm gonna show you how to use Desmos because Desmos is online. I do have the desktop version of GeoGebra, but I know that one's um, quite, um, it could be quite pricey. Um, so instead I'm gonna use Desmos, which is free. So Desmos.com, I'm gonna go to graphing calculator and the equation that I want, would wanna put on that one is the cubic equation. So I'm just gonna type in the equation that I want graphed here. Um, f of x is equal to x cubed. So this is the cubic equation. I'm going to zoom in a bit so that it's nice and big. It's really clear to see this is the cubic equation and I wanna turn off the background. So I'm gonna go over to my little wrench here and I'm gonna turn off the grid so it's just a white background. And now I wanna download this picture. To download this picture, I'm gonna go over to share graph, export image, and I like it. This You can definitely download this as is, as a PNG, um, but I like downloading this um, thick. So I like making it nice and thick. It makes it just so much crisper um, for students to see. I'm gonna go to download PNG, and it did bring it down here to the bottom. If yours didn't save it there, it may have saved it somewhere on your desktop, which is what I did. I went through all of these and I saved them on my desktop. Now to add them into your maze, you're going to do the same thing we did when we added this equation. This is the same thing you would do. Let's say you were creating um, an activity for a, um, um, let's say kindergarten class and it, it's, um, recognizing animals. So you have a picture of a dog and they have to write dog or maybe animal sounds. So you have a picture of a dog and they have to say bark, right? So things like that, you would insert a picture in here. And in order to do that, you would have to find those pictures, have them saved on your desktop. And then you would go to insert image, image and cell, and then find that picture in there. So I'm hitting the browse button and I have that saved um, as number two. That is that cubic graph you just saw me make on Desmos. And the answer to this one is cubic. All right, so at this moment, I would like for you to pause the video and go through and add all of your 18 questions onto this. Okay, so you wanna pause right here and then come back when your activity looks like this. I have all 18 questions in here, and now we're gonna talk about adding those answers into sheet two. All right, so I'm trusting that you have all 18 of your questions on here, and we are ready for our next step, which is making our key. Okay, so our key can be found on sheet two. What I have is I have all of these answers, quadratic, cubic, radical, absolute value. I have them written down on a sheet of paper in order so that then I can just go in to my key and just quickly type them in. Okay, so again, the order that this works is from left to right. So this is question one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine, 10, and so on and so forth. There's a total number of 18. So I'm gonna go over to sheet two, scroll all the way to the left, and then down to that 117. And I'm just gonna type those answers in here in order. So quadratic, 
cubic um, radical absolute value radical quadratic reciprocal. So again, it's just whatever your answers are, you're just typing them in order. Okay, so I want to show you real quick because you can go back and forth and make sure that it's working. I've typed in one through seven. So what I should see when I go back to sheet one is that questions one through seven should now have those answers in pink because this should have worked. All right, so there you go. These questions, one, two, three, four, five, whole, six and seven are not correct. I made a mistake. Um, so it's either a mistake in my key or I've made a mistake in my um, answer sheet. Okay, so I have that question number six is reciprocal. That is the answer. This is the correct answer. So let me check what I have in my key. On number six, oh, I have that backwards. So this should be reciprocal, reciprocal for this one. And then number seven should be quadratic. All right, so I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna check. Perfect, now they're pink. Okay, so as long as those questions match, then all of them should turn pink. A couple of tips here. So you definitely wanna keep going until all of them are pink. So they should look like this. If you have any um, parts in here that are not pink, um, so any of them that are not working, there's a couple of things that can happen. One of them is if you have the answer zero. So if you have the answer zero, sometimes um, sheets is a little bit finicky um, on things like that. Or if you have um, just a little bit more of like unusual um, questions like fractions, right? Like one half. Um, sheets sometimes will read that as a date, as January 2nd, which is actually my birthday. Um, but if you had things like that, um, sheets might be a little bit weird. What you want to do with questions like that. Um, you want to highlight that answer. So I would show you, um, let's say like this one. You want to highlight that field and you want to go to uh, format, number, and then it will be um, automatic. You want to change that to plain text. Okay, so you would change that to plain text and then it should work just fine. You need to do that on both the answer here and also on sheet two. So because this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this would this one would be eight. I need to go to number eight and I would do the same thing to that one. Go to format, number, and change that to plain text. Okay, so notice how it shifted to the side. This is where plain text goes. It's left, um, it's left justified, numbers are right justified. Um, so I'm gonna change this now, the uh, correct answer to this one's exponential. Okay, and notice how the capital letters also don't matter. Um, and what, let's see, exponential, did I type this in right? Exponential. There you go, I had spelled it wrong, exponential. Okay, so take a moment, pause the video, Come back and join me once you have all of your questions and all of your answers typed in. And what we're gonna talk about next is hiding that sheet two from your students so that then your worksheet is done. So technically your worksheet's done right here, but you don't want your students to have easy access to those answers, you wanna hide it. Um, so that's what we're gonna talk about next. So I'm gonna be over here, I'm trusting that you already have this done. Um, if for whatever reason you're running into issues, um, please hit that um, button that came with your activities and send us an email. I promise we get back to you guys super, super fast. Um, this is not something that should be taking you um, try after try. It should be this easy. The way that you're watching me put these in, it should definitely be, be this quick. Okay, so um, if you're running into any issues, we're more than happy to help you troubleshoot and it'll be something that we can usually clear up right away. So I'm gonna go over to sheet two. Um, my favorite, my old favorite um, way of hiding answers was to turn the text white. Okay, so I would just select the whole sheet here and then turn the text white. The problem that I found with that is that students have gotten really smart 
I mean, they've always been smart, right? We have some brilliant kids out there. Um, but it's really easy now. It draws your eyes that the text is white. So they know that all they got to do is switch it back to black and they would be able to see their answers. So instead, what I like to do is I am going to switch this to back to black. I like to switch the font to just these here, but conditionally so. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to select all of these. This is what I want to hide. I want to hide my answers from them. So I'm selecting just that um, box. I'm going to right click. Um, this view more cells um, actions, and then I'm going to go to conditional formatting. Notice how when I click there, everything is turning green. I don't want that. I want this to still be white. So I chose this color fill, um, the fill tool, and I switched it back to white, but I also want to make the text white. Okay, what this is telling Sheets is that if there's anything in these cells, which there is, there's something on those cells, if there's anything in those cells, I want them all to turn, the, for the text to turn white. So I'm gonna hit done here. Now notice how when I'm not on those fields there, this is still black. So no matter where they click, they'd have to actually physically know that the answers are here and they still can't see what those answers are. They can select this all they want and keep changing the font color and it's not going to do absolutely anything because it is conditionally formatted. They would need to know that they need to delete that or turn that off before they can even see the answers. Okay, so that's hidden. And now that that's hidden, I wanna hide this sheet too. So to hide the sheet, I'm going to go over here um, into the sheet. I'm just selecting that. I'm going to right click it and then I'm going to go to hide sheet. So now that second sheet is gone and this is all students get. This is your answer key. So I would save this now that you're done as an answer key and then make a copy and the copy that I make, I would clear out all the answers and that's what I would share with students. So I'm gonna do that next. I'm just gonna save this as an answer key. I'll call this parent, parent function maze and then answer key. All right, so this is my answer key. Now I'm going to duplicate this. So I'm gonna to go to File, Make a Copy. And I'm gonna title this copy, My Student uh, Maze, Student Copy. So I'm just waiting a couple of seconds. So this is a student copy. What this means is this is what you would share with your students. You obviously don't want to share all the answers. You want them to do the work. So I'm just gonna erase these um, answers here. So now the students um, will get all of the questions with no answers. Once you make a copy for them in whatever software you use at school, all they have to do is type in the answers and follow along the maze. I hope you found this easy. Um, if you did, definitely consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. I think you'll find tons of useful things in here. There's lots of free activities. Um, and if you have any questions, leave a comment, um, like, send us an email. We are definitely more than happy to help. Um, I want to thank you so much um, for purchasing this and then taking the time to watch the video. We really, really do appreciate it and we welcome all of your feedback. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye.